I had stuffed cheese bread on request. <laughs> I just got it. Max going with the red tie tonight. Lava, brother. I told you guys. UFC been trying to ice me. Toronto. Brazil is cold as shit, too. Here is cold as shit. They can't ice the Hawaiian, bro. So I had to bring the heat. This tie is called lava. I mean, that, that fight seemed like it resembled the first one pretty similarly. I mean, back and forth first two rounds, then you finish them off, I think, 30 seconds later uh -huh. in the third round than the last time. Uh, I know you said, you know, you see how it's going once you're in there, but mm -hmm. what did you just make of, you know, how the fight unfolded this time around? You know, you know, first things first, you know, I, I recently uh, heard about Aldo's, uh, his uh, motivation for his fight was his daughter, and, you know, me being a parent with my son, I get it. But, you know, that guy should, he should know, he, he doesn't have to owe anybody anything, you know. That guy's one of the greatest of all time. I think uh, Brazil should be building statues of that guy in all the favelas, man. He's a legend. He's a goat. And I got a lot to feel, so. But, you know, to your question, I, I told you guys before, there's a quote going around. I told you guys, if I beat you one time, the second time is going to be worse. And then the third time, you should rethink your life about accepting the fight, you know. But just joking, but it's, I, we knew it, you know, I, after the first round, I walked up to, to Joe Rogan and John Anik, I told him the guy's tired, he's tired already, in the third round, I dropped my hands, I was telling him to punch me, I was like, bro, this is where you punch me, punch me in the face, I'm daring you, I was telling him, I dare you, I dare you punch me now, and, you know, it went well, things went my way, I think so, I landed, um, he landed some shots, my shots just seemed to hurt him a little bit more, so, everything went my, my night tonight, but, like I said, the guy's a goat, man. You know, nothing but respect for him and his team and his family and all of Brazil. Yeah, and I know you said in the lead up to this fight too that no one has really stood with you for a full fight, and you guys were striking it out for a while. But the beginning of the end was him shooting for that takedown. Uh -huh. uh, so does that just further prove your point? Yeah, I told you guys, man. Uh, I'd be turning these strikers into wrestlers. You know, all these strikers think they're gonna strike with me. We're gonna do this and that, and they they end up trying to shoot on me, and. Um, and that's what happened, you know. I actually, uh, in the back, and one of my, uh, where's my friends, uh, my coaches, in the back, I was telling him, I was actually thinking of taking him down. He was so tired, and I wasn't landing punches. I was like, I should take him down and ground pound. And I was like, wait, I tease people who do that. Yeah, let's not do it. <laughs> so I, I ended up punching, ended up falling, and we ended up getting the finish, so, so it was great. Yeah, and I mean, you you were rolling deep here tonight. I mean, your son's sitting there next to me. You have, uh, you know, tons of people out here. Yeah, that, stop bringing out my son already. He already took my thunder before the fight. I had to, I, I saw him going, okay, look, let's say uh, I in on crazy. I was like, I got to live up to this shit. Come on, Russ. But, and then a knockout happens before, and then Yancey's fight. I'm like, what is going on? Everybody is setting the bar high for me. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, was this the first time he's seen you fight live? Yeah, uh, first time he saw me fight live before, but the first time I think so, he actually know what's going on. So yeah, it was cool. You know, I could hear him. I could hear him in in, in uh, when I was sit down in the corner. I was hearing him cheer. So it's pretty funny. It was pretty crazy. I was like, oh man, usually he's at home watching it on TV, you know. And I got to Facetime him, and then he always like not surprised about the gold belt. So. This guy is funny. Yeah, when you're in the back watching Yancey's fight, how are you reacting? Are you, I mean, freaking out? Or are you trying to keep yourself calm to not exert all your energy? What's, we, what's yeah, it like? I was at the hotel. We was coming down, and uh, I was freaking out. You know, me and my friend was freaking out. Look, there's a thing of you, we, us fighters, we know how it is in there, and we can control it, and we know what we can control. And then when you're watching one of your best friends, you know, this guy, we, we did camp. I seen him all day, all the time. We do the same trainings. And you see stuff like that, ups and downs. It's like you can't do nothing, so you feel hopeless. And I was like, oh, no, why? And then when he's up, it's like, yay. So it was, a, it was an emotional roller coaster, you know, like anything else. But he got the job done. You know, congrats to his 50K, mother sucker. You know, I wanted my 50K too, but, you know, congrats to him. But, yeah, like I said, UFC reports, you guys ranking reports. If you guys beat a ranked guy... You guys should be ranked at that stuff, so do not jip my man Yancey. Put him 15, and let's go UFC. Let's go to UFC Hawaii. Let's do Hawaii versus uh, Hawaii versus the world. I think we got what 10, 11 UFC, UFC Hawaii fighters now. The time is now.
There you go. And last thing for me, um, you're on a 12 fight winning streak now. I think it's the fourth longest in UFC history. You turned 26 on Monday. Happy early birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how far can you take this thing? What's kind of the, the end goal here of just how long this run can really go? Uh, we see, you know, medically, I, uh, the, only time, the only thing that's going to stop me is medically. If, if I medically can't make the weight, I'm not gonna, then I'm not going to force my body to do something that it doesn't want to, you know. I'll gladly go up to 55. You know, I was talking to Michael Bisbing them on the show. You know, Michael was like, oh, can we see you a future champion? I was like, Michael, you know, he calls me Maxi Baby. I was like, Michael, you're, you're cutting Maxi Baby short. Us Hawaiians, I'm Hawaiian Samoan, I love to eat. I'm going to go for four titles, you know, 170, 155, 170, 185. They all can get, I might even be at heavyweight one day. I don't know, you guys, you guys know our eating habits is bad down in Hawaii. So, you know, your boy might get big and we might, we might make history. Uh, Max, congratulations, of course, on the victory. Um, I asked you this before the fight, but now that it's all over, I mean, what does it mean for your legacy that you now hold two wins over Jose Aldo. No one has ever done that, much less beat him back to back, obviously. But I mean, where does this rank? I mean, how big is this for your legacy that you did beat him a second time? This is huge, you know, this is huge. Like I said, you know, they, people ask me what that makes me. That makes me a guy with two wins over Aldo, and I got a bunch catch, uh, I got a bunch more to catch up to him. You know, he, he uh, he's the greatest of all time. He got, uh, what, seven, eight, eight uh, title defensive. I got to catch up, you know, that that's... Numbers don't lie, you know. Women lie, men lie. Numbers don't lie. I only got one defense. I got a bunch of c catching up to do. He's still at the GOAT, and I respect him, man. I'm coming for that record, though. The last time you won, you said, you know, your kind of post-fight demand was, you know, you had to sit down with the UFC, you know, get your contract sorted out. Now that's sorted out. Uh -huh. So this time, are you going to sit down and demand that UFC in Hawaii card? Is that your demand this time? Yeah, you know, I'm the, I saw Dana. I was talking to him, you know. I, I told him. He said, hey, you know, you know I, maybe I got to do it. Maybe I do it outside and, uh, and just suck it up. I was like, yeah, don't be scared, homie. Stop being scared. I was about to ask him if I could Hawaiian slap him, you know. You guys saw it in the first Aldo fight, but... I'm just joking. I I think so. The fight's gotta happen. We got a champion. We're gonna have a ranked guy, and another you know another Hawaiian. Things didn't go her way on this card, but she's a Hawaiian. Uh, Rachel just won the the other fight. We got all kind of guys ready for my team, ready to go. We got guys signed. Uh, Dan Ige, Boston Solomon from Waianae, and uh, I think so. We got like nine or ten guys, nine or ten guys in Hawaii from the state of Hawaii. Wait, Brad Tavares, you know, willing to fight. We could, let's do the whole UFC Hawaii, Hawaii versus the world. Anybody can get it, featuring Max Holloway. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, you know it was you know you roll with the punches when the change in the fight happened when it went from Frankie to, to Aldo. You never blinked. You never cared. Uh, but do you feel like you do have any unfinished business with Edgar because you didn't get to fight him? I mean, is that is that kind of the next logical fight just because he's right there and and you've kind of cleared out most of the other contenders right now? You know. Like I said, I've been telling you guys all week the same thing. It's the cupcakes. These guys is cupcakes. I, I, I want the new flavor. I want to I want to know what, how the new flavor tastes like. But I know how the old ones taste, so it's great. I'm fine with anything. I'll fight them all. They're all going to take L's, like I said. By the time I'm done with this division, when you look at the top 15, everybody's going to have an L next to their name, some guys too. And if you're lucky, you're going to have three. And this may not be next, but I asked Dana about this, so I'll ask you. I know it's something that's on your mind. Talk about you know an old flavor. Conor McGregor's out there. You got 12 wins in a row. You've beaten pretty much every featherweight contender, you know, between this this win streak. And if you beat Frankie, I don't really know. Maybe Brian Ortega if he wins. Uh, is that Conor fight? That would feel like a super fight if he's champion, you're champion. I mean, does it feel like at some point that's some unfinished business you're going to have to to have? Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I'm a champion of my division. And I gotta take, I gotta keep everything rolling, you know. I gotta keep everything going. I gotta throw him to defend. I'm not gonna go in a hiatus. And uh, you know, as long as I get contenders, I'm gonna fight. But if you see, call me out for that reason. Any any reason of fighting him, I gladly fight him. If if the Connor fight don't happen, it's not on my side. I tell you guys right now, it's not on my side. It's on their team. Their team talking about me all the time. They tell me how I'm the best guy in the world and blah blah, blah this and that. Right now. Connor, like, really think about this. Right now, Connor is talking about fighting Pauli Malignaggi in MMA. Let, just let that sink in, you know? Pauli Malignaggi in MMA, I'm, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say after that. Uh, Max, congratulations back here. Thank you, brother. Um, a guy you haven't really matched up with is Cub Swanson. I don't know that was a thought process uh -huh. before was Frankie or Cub. Uh -huh. It became Frankie, then it turned into Jose. If Cub wins his next fight, is would that be a lane you'd like to, you know, look at, maybe in venture towards? 
I, like I said, we see. I ain't no matchmaker. Uh, I'm a fighter. I'm, a, I'm the king of the division. All these guys can bang. I like People's like, call out this guy. Call out that guy. Why? I got the belt. I'm not a contender anymore. I'm the champion. I'm sitting top of... I'm sitting pretty. You know, I'm hungry. And uh, if they want to fight, if that's the fight UFC makes, the UFC makes it. I don't care. I, I take that fight with open arms. Hey, Max, right here. Uh, how much credit does this uh, win go to the people around you, your manager, you know, working with Tyler Minton this time around? It seems like you have a really good support system, and I know they've, they've really sort of helped you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get to this point. Tyler Minton? Fuck that guy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I love that guy, man. He's, uh, uh, he, was my, he was feeding me great. You know, everybody was talking about the cut and whatever and this and that and being like, oh, he brought out the towel and blah, blah, blah. I'm like... I bring out the towel because when I check my weight, I check my weight without underwear on. Why am I going to cut an extra half pound to wear an underwear to a weigh-in? Just bring out the damn towel, you know what I mean? That's extra work. And uh, Tyler, made me, Tyler made me eat. When I was fighting Pettis last year, I, well, during Thanksgiving, I had a gallon of water all day. I had four meals with Tyler Mitten here for this fight, you know, on, on Thanksgiving. So I, I was blessed with him, you know. My coaches, my coaches, my staff... My management, you know, Gracie Technics, Legacy Muay Thai, Tactical Strain and Conditioning, uh, Sucker Punch Entertainment. I got, I got some of the best guys behind me, man. And uh, a lot of success is with them, you know. They're, they, they're the guys working behind. I'm just the product. I'm the product that's getting shown to the world, you know. They're the ones that, that's, they're, they're the guys underneath the hood fixing everything and getting me ready to go. How much did this uh, cut compared to some of your other fights? Because, again, you know, uh, the difference in this fight for sure was the fact you had a lot more energy, a yeah. lot more cardio best I ever felt. That's how I said. Best I ever felt. Everybody was like, oh, you sound this and that. You know, that's what happens when you cut weight. Your, your throat is dry. You know, I don't know. That's, that's what happened to me. But I was fine. My energy was fine. Everything was great. You know, everybody's like, you look distraught on top of the stuff. I look, the reason why I look distraught on top of the, uh, the scale is because when I was c c covering it and I saw in the towel in front of the stuff and you had to be the scale, I was like, me knowing Gaethje, there's only one way the towel was going, up and down. That's why I had to be covering the Hawaiian snake, and I was ready. That's why I was distraught, guys, because I already know he was going up and down. And, and, you know, there's no other way to do it. So he was the man. He was thinking of me. He wanted me to get my drinks in faster. So shout out to Justin Gaethje, and uh, he's the man. And ideally, when would you like to get back in the cage? I know this wind's very fresh, but uh, do you sort of have an idea in your head when you'd like to fight next? Whenever UFC wants to put my ass in Hawaii, you know, or, or the night island in Vegas, you know, I don't know. We see. Uh, I'm going to sit down with my management, you know. I got, uh, I got my birthday, uh, my girl's birthday, my son's birthday coming up. So we got, we got a bunch of birthdays to celebrate. So I'm going to do that, enjoy that. And uh, if UFC come calling, though, I'll be ready. I'm always ready. And the uh, last question for you, you talked about the cupcakes. What, what's sort of your go-to cupcake? What's your favorite one? Oh, my favorite one is uh, peanut butter jelly tan. <laughs> uh, back here, congratulations on the victory and happy early birthday. Thank you, boss. Um, you know, a last, not really a last second switch, but kind of a late switch in the camp going from your original opponent, Frank Yeager, to Jose Aldo. How much did it help that you had fought him once before? I mean, it was that, you know, less videotape to study, more videotape to study, or was it just a familiarity, you know, that would help? I was just, you know, it didn't change. You know, you got to roll the punches. If you believe you're the best man in the world, you're going to fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. And I believe it, you know, and I get ready and I train that way. So there's no questions, you know. I, I leave no turn on stone when I'm training. I'm training and uh, it was great. You know, when I was in there, he must he might have looked quicker, but I was telling my coaches, he felt slower. Like when I was in there, I was seeing a lot more stuff. He hit me with his uppercut again. I was pretty disappointed about that. But, uh, but yeah, he, he felt a little bit slower to me. Do you think you could have had him in, at the end of the second round? It looked like you were really starting to gain momentum then. Yeah, I, I, I was just having fun, man. He was this, he was blocking, he was covering up a lot, you know, and uh, he, he has like bony elbows and stuff, and like I was punching it and stuff, and and you know I hurt my hands before punching people's elbows and top of the head, so I was just trying to take my time and trying to move, you know, not trying to, I wasn't trying to step into anything, none of his bounds. He was, he was swinging pretty hard. I just didn't want to walk into anything and, uh, you know, be looking at the canvas. That would have been a horrible night. Uh, one last question for you. As a father of two myself, you know, how much inspiration was that having your young son in the crowd? Uh, it was great, you know. It was great. Uh, it was 
it was funny, that guy. I just, I'm still mad at him for taking my thunder, though. <laughs> I think so. The internet is broken by him dabbing more than me finishing all those. So it's a, it's a very sad day in the Holloway household. I think he might sleep outside with a dog. <laughs> Hey, Max, congrats. By the way, where did he learn to dab so well? Uh, did you teach him? Uh, this thing called Kids YouTube. Okay. And yeah, uh, yeah. whatever he just does. Did you see his repeated dab? Yeah. That, was the, that was on point. I was like, I'm not going to beat that. I was going to dab uh, in the pre, uh, after the fight, but I was like, nah, man. I'm just bite, biting his swag. I'm going to get shit on for it. So. I'm not sure if you, if you thought of this, um, if this crossed your mind. This was the first time that the featherweight title was defended successfully since October of 2014. It has been oh, quite I some didn't. time. And uh, you did something, you know, we always bring up Connor to you. You did something that Connor never did. You defended the featherweight title and you fought Aldo for a second time. Does that mean anything to you? Did you want to bring some stability back to this division when you when you took the crown? Yeah, like I told you, you know, th this is what champions do. Champions defend and they always say you're not a champion until you defend your title. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to bring stability, and I, want, I wanted to prove to people, this is how, if you want to be a champ, this is what you got to do. You know, you got to keep the, it's, it's like me. I had to take, it took me 10 fights to get an interim title and the 11 for the undisputed, you know. I don't want anybody else to go to that, you know. I want everybody to pick them. I want to be like DJ. As soon as they come up, they pop up, you guys get sent right back down to the bottom of the barrel, brother. So, <laughs> good try, and uh, keep trying to catch up. We're in an era now where it seems like, you know, someone gets a belt and then they ask for a super fight or moving up and uh -huh. things like that. Uh -huh. Do you not like that? Do you, do you want Do you want to go back to the the old days where it's just like, who's next? Let me fight that guy and that's it. You know, I I understand. I can see it from uh, from two ways. You know, people trying to get their money, and leave the game early, and people trying to set history or whatever this and that. You know, right now I'm focused on champ life. I want to be a champion. I want to be. A long reigning featherweight champion. I want to be known in the history books, my name everywhere, you know, as a champion and this and that. And then when later on in my career, when I start getting good, then I can start doing the exhibition matches for money and stuff, you know. But right now, I think so. I think so. The world needs to know what a champion looks like, and that's what I, I'm trying to put my foot down and show the world. This is what a champion looks like. Defend. I don't really cry about anything, and uh, you know, if you think you're the best, come fight bless. And just one more. For the longest time, BJ Penn was considered the greatest Hawaiian fighter of all uh -huh. time. Do you feel like it's time that, that you're called the greatest Hawaiian fighter of all time now? Nah, I got a lot more. He got two, he got what, another belt in another division? He got two belts in two divisions. He defended his 55 title. I got a bunch more. You know, like I said, he set in the record for us, you know, and records are meant to be, be broken, you know, just like me. I, I dare anybody, not only a Hawaii kid, any kid from anywhere, if you guys, guys want to do something, you believe in yourself and go do it. I'm setting these records. I dare you to beat them. And if you did... Good for you. I'm going to give you a handshake, you know. Show up to your front door and tell you congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Right here, Max. Uh, we talked the other day about how Detroit feels like home to you. You said you feel very at home. Um, what does it mean to you to bring such a night of excitement to a city who doesn't get a lot of MMA action? I, I've been telling you guys since you guys didn't believe me. Every single card. I told you guys, stop sleeping on 206. Look, people had to replay that and watch that. 212 was the same way. I was like, don't sleep on it. It stood an exciting card. And 218 was an exciting ass card, guys. I told you guys don't sleep on it. That wasn't I saw I saw a stat saying that this is the first time in history where all the fights on the main card was uh ranked six or higher, the fighters. You know, these cards is meant to be exciting. There's a lot of chips on a lot of people's shoulders. Every card they put UFC put me on, a lot of the guys that I'm fighting with, we got chips on our shoulders, we got something to prove, you know? And uh, we go out there and prove it all the time. So it was great. I'm happy D the I happy Detroit love it. I'm happy. I'm sure my fellow Hawaiians love it. I hope the world love it. And uh, even my Canadians. I got to show love to the Canadians. You know, they, 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 they show me big love. So I hope they love it too. Thank you, guys.